So I thought that I would um, start out first uh, just actually by reviewing and talking a little bit about what is mind-body medicine. What exactly does that mean? And then my intent is to review the tasks of the elderly. And then I will weave all of that together and talk about how we as caregivers who work with the elderly can apply these principles in our work. Now, I'm assuming, actually, everyone here is working with the elderly or you wouldn't be in a gerontology conference. Is that true? <laughs> all right. Okay, everybody's either nodding or raising your hand. Okay, so um, talking about mind-body medicine, I thought, now I have to wander a little bit here. I'm not a static personality. <laughs> I thought I would uh, actually share a story about um, a patient that I saw a number of years ago, and actually I was filling in with another phys for another physician at that time, and um, there was on the patient roster a woman who I was scheduled to see who was elderly, who I noticed in reviewing her chart had had pneumonia several times in, the, in that past year, three or four times. And um, I thought, now isn't that interesting? I wonder what's going on because nowhere in her chart could I find prior to that a history of respiratory illness or definitely not pneumonia. So I thought, now I wonder what's going on here. I mean, that seemed to me like a clue that there was something, either a deficiency in the immune system or some sort of exposure or something that needed attention beyond just treating the pneumonia. So I decided that I would spend a little extra time with her and try to dig to the bottom of this. Well, to cut to the chase, um, really the only thing that she could think of that was different or that had happened roughly a year ago was that her husband had died. Now, as it turned out, this woman had no other extended family. And I really got the sense that she had never really grieved the loss of her husband. She had definitely not talked about it with anyone. She didn't have anybody to talk to. And she was of the mindset which many people of the older generation relative to us have, which is that being stoic is a very strong, a very important thing. Being strong means that you don't express your emotions and so on and so forth. And so she was trying very hard to live her life in that manner. But the truth was that she had never grieved the loss of her husband. So we spent the better part of half an hour just crying, actually. I held her and we both cried <laughs> a little bit, but she cried a lot. And I know, I absolutely know that that event had everything to do with her ongoing, recurring, infectious respiratory illnesses. And we have a number of paradigms in which we could explain that in a sort of rational way. Um, fortunately, now in uh, scientific Western American um, parlance, there is a field of science called uh, psychoneuroimmunology. Any of you have heard of that? Psychoneuroimmunology. And you take, pick that apart and you get a sense of what it means, psychoneuroimmunology. And, you know, it was a real big deal a number of years ago when we discovered the neurochemicals, the chemicals in the brain that serve as messengers from one neuron to another. Well, the latest big deal, really, is that on the white blood cells, the immune system cells, the, the defense system of our bodies, are also receptor sites specifically for neurochemicals. Now, at one time, of course, we thought that neurochemicals were completely confined to the nervous system. As it turns out, there's a rich interplay of conversation going on inside of our body between the brain chemistry and the immune system of the body, along with everything else. But in this case, talking about the immune system, in point of fact, one of the many things that has been discovered in this rich field of science so far is that in conditions of stress, when the neurochemicals of the nervous system, such as adrenaline and epinephrine and so on and so forth, are upregulated, they insert into the receptor sites in the white blood cells in such a way that the white cells are down-regulated. So in point of fact, 
we now have scientific proof for what we always knew, <laughs> which is that when we're stressed, our immune system is down and it's more likely to catch diseases. I like to compare, I'm trained also in oriental medicine, and uh, that paradigm oftentimes explains things in a holistic way that Western American medicine, which is really in its infancy, hasn't quite caught up to yet. So I will also share that paradigm as a focus of explanation for how it is that this woman might be having so many uh, bouts of pneumonia after having the severe grief and loss of her husband. As it turns out, the meridian, how many of you are familiar somewhat with, yeah, a lot of you are not, wow, this is way cool. I'm talking to my partners here. <laughs> As it, the, the meridian that has to do uh, in its, first of all, in oriental medicine, you, uh, meridian awareness, there is a deep uh, understanding that our body and mind are not separate. I mean, really, that's so artificial, isn't it? Body, mind, I, I feel so odd sometimes trying to talk to people about the body-mind connection as if they're separate. It's very artificial, incredibly artificial.